Welcome back to the Colossal Color Showdown. This is episode 11, and we're gonna be continuing to look at the quinacridone gold, comparing the old version of the quinacridone gold to the newer quinacridone gold hue colors. In the last episode, I said that the Sennelier and Jacksons are probably the closest in color to the Daniel Smiths, and it'd be interesting to see if that's true through the tests that we go through in this episode. We have the old Daniel Smith here, the old Sennelier that we saw that was completely different color to any other Quinacridone gold colors. And then the Daniel Smith, Holbein, Sennelier, Schmincke, Windsor & Newton, Quo, M. Graham and Jacksons. And with doing the gradated wash, it's very interesting because the subtle differences in hue really, really come out. You can see that with the Holbein's one, even though the mass tone is pretty similar, as you wash the color out, it's very, very yellow. And the same goes for the M. Graham's one. M. Graham's one was noticeably more yellow anyway in the wash and you can really see that in the gradated wash. So these two are the most yellow out of the two. Windsor & Newton suffers from big cauliflower problems. So if you do do a lot of washes with quinacridone gold, then I would probably avoid that color. So that really leaves us with Core, Daniel Smith, Sennelier, Jacksons, and Schmincke. Schmincke, I have to say, does lack the depth of color, the kind of the dark brownness in some of the patches of the old version. And so it feels a little bit flatter. It's harder to create texture with the color. So I would probably remove that from the option as well. That leaves these four. And I would say with the cause one, you don't get a very good gradation. I think it's finally that artificial ox gold thing happening where the color just rushes through. Whereas in the old quinacridone version by Dana Smith, you can see a nice gradation all the way down to the almost a white color here. And for that reason, I would say that the Snellier and Jacksons are better behaved for gradation, even though it is slightly different in how it gradates than the old Daniel Smith does. For the gradated wash, I would say behavior wise, the new Daniel Smith one is similar. However, in terms of the hue you get in the washes, I would say that Jackson's one and Snellier's one is pretty similar in the colors you get around here. It's not as good as the original Daniel Smith, but again, these two are pretty awesome in comparison to say all the other very yellow colors. It has that warmth that the new Daniel Smith one is slightly lacking. The old Daniel Smith is very warm and has a very nice brown, warm, heated orange tone to it. Whereas you can definitely see the Azo yellow really coming through here. Now let's look at the salt test. And I thought for once we were gonna have a very similar reaction, but we didn't. The Schmincke's one and the Windsor Newton one reacted very differently to the others. The others didn't really react much to salt. The original one definitely didn't react much at all. The new Daniel Smith one does react a little bit more than the original one. The others didn't really, apart from these two. So if you do want a very salt reactive version of the quinacridone gold, then do go for the Schmincke. But if you want one that behaves in a similar way, then do avoid Schmincke and Windsor Newton. Now let's look at the color mixes. Color mix is where the subtle differences in the hue really starts to play up. For this color mix, I chose the ultramarine violet as its complement color, so we can neutralize the color, as well as the primary yellow, magenta, and cyan. First of all, you can really notice that the M. Graham's one, the most yellow one that we've seen in this episode, 
does make a huge difference in the color mix. This is very, very orange and it's a very strong orange with a strong yellow undertone, which the original one doesn't have. The original Kunakudon Gold does mix wonderfully with other colors. It just creates this lovely, not too soft, not too strong, slightly muted range of colors. Now recreating that slightly mutedness is hard when you're playing with Kunakudon Orange and Azo Yellow. They're both very bright colors. And so if you go a little bit too far on the Azo side, you get a little bit too bright a mix. With the Holbein one, you can really see the yellowness come through in the complementary mix, as well as the coarse one, you can see the yellow coming through strongly. In terms of how it mutes out with the ultramarine violet, I would say that the Jackson's one is the closest in hue, even though you do see a very strong yellow undertone still happening here. In the oranges, you get this lovely coral color when you mix the color with the magenta. And for that, I would say that the Schmincke's one is lovely and corally, as well as Winsor Newton's one, as well as the Jackson's one. The rest a little bit too much to the orange side. In terms of the green, now this color is really hard to reproduce. You tend to get either too green, which are these colors, or a little bit too turquoisey, which are the Schmincke's, the Winsor Newton, Core M. Graham, and Jackson's one. That was the color that was most difficult to reproduce. So if you did tend to mix the original quinacridone gold with lots of other colors, that's where you're gonna really, really see difference in the hue of the newer versions. You're not gonna get very good matches with how the color mixed originally with other colors. It's very hard to pick which is the closest in mix. It's definitely not the M Graham, it's too yellow. And I would say that for color mixes, Holbein's probably too yellow as well, as well as Schmincke's one and probably the core. So that kind of leaves it with Jackson's, Sennelier, Windsor Newton and the new Daniel Smith as well. Overall, I would say that in terms of behavior and hue and how it does the gradated washes, that for me personally, if I had to pick the closest one, it would be Jackson's followed by the Sennelier's one. If you don't mind how it is a honey based color and therefore you are going to have to learn to adjust from a non honey based color of the old Quinacton gold by Daniel Smith with the new Sennelier and Jackson's honey based colors. I speak from personal experience that that does take some getting used to, but you do get that really nice depth of brown that the other colors are tending to lack. So I think they did do a great job matching that depth of color. The one I would least recommend is the M Grams one because it's just too yellow for it to match the quinacridone gold of the old version. However, you might not necessarily be needing to match to the old version of quinacridone gold. You might just want a bright brownish yellow orange color, in which case I would actually recommend Schmincke's one. That one does very nicely in terms of just going down on paper really well. And I would recommend Schmincke's one over Sennelier's and Jackson's one, just because these two aren't as transparent as some of the other colors, as well as Holbein one does very nicely too. So if you are just looking for a fresh start with a Kunakudan gold, then these two are a good choice as well. So basically this half of the sheet is a good choice in terms of Kunakudan gold, depending on what you're looking for, whether you're looking for a good match to the old one or just want a nice, well-behaved new quinacridone gold. This month's Patreon exclusive dot card is the yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is such a critical part of many people's palette that it's really important to find the right yellow ochre, especially as we saw in our yellow ochre episodes, the different brands have such different opacity. If you'd like to carry out your own comparisons with yellow ochres to find your favorite, 
but you don't want to commit to buying eight full tubes of yellow ochre paint then this dot card is a great valuable economical way to test out eight samples they're huge samples so you get to try out many different tests until you're happy with your choice to receive this dot card this month then do head on over to patreon.com forward slash autocano and sign up to the appropriate tiers and this dot card will be arriving at your doorstep in no time i do hope you enjoyed this episode thank you so much again to denise from in liquid color julia from studio julia and dan from penholder art as well as the wonderful patrons that have been supplying me with wonderful samples of watercolor throughout this episode we are working very close towards the second season of the colossal color showdown so if you have been enjoying this series and you are able to support this channel please do consider going over to patreon.com forward slash autocano you can also find high res scans of every test sheet i create for all my videos over there on there Thank you so much for watching this episode and I will see you in the next episode where we start looking at the cobalt teal colour. So I will see you in the next episode. Bye!